A rumor of an Intel Core i9 with six cores. What could this be? Oh, this is from 2009. This is back when there were rumors that Intel was about to announce an i9 series above the i7. Many people thought this was a logical conclusion for the top end chip when they were, you know, crushing AMD into the ground. And to be honest, it would have probably been pretty fair at the time. I mean, if you look at the lineup, there was just going to be one i9, Gulf Town, and this would have six cores, 12 threads. This was an era where people were just getting over the idea that you didn't always want a faster dual core over a slightly slower clocked quad core for gaming. In 2009, quad cores started to be recommended unanimously in high-end builds, or at least almost unanimously. And this would have brought not just four cores, you know, like what you would have seen in Core 2, but for six cores, 12 threads, towering over everything else. And the i9 moniker would have been reserved for the highest end CPU in the lineup. Just one single i9 for those who can afford to pay $1,000. And to be honest, I don't think that would have been a terrible idea. But it wasn't to be. Intel did not introduce i9 10 years ago. And this would have been entirely justified back then. I mean, this would have been a processor in a league of its own. 12 threads in 2009. Nothing really from the competition to stand in its way. And markedly more threads, not just a lot for the time, but markedly more than anything else they were selling to consumers. I mean, that's what i9 should be. You can't call everything in your high-end lineup i7. Eventually, half your lineup will just be i7. That's what i9 was supposed to be for, ultimate prestige. And as long as it's only ultimate prestige, i7 would have still had prominence. But it doesn't. Remember how I said you can't just have half of your lineup i7s? How about making half of your lineup i9s? Because that's what Intel's doing right now. And the fact that they didn't call this one CPU with 50% more threads than the next thing down in i9 back then tells you what they were saving this for. Marketing. That's all i9 ever meant to Intel, and it's really a nonsensical position. But they could get away with, you know, calling everything an i7 back then because no one cared. Because if you had four cores, eight threads from Intel back then, you had a prestigious product, and everything above that was prestige. But that's not the case anymore. Of course, we all know when that changed. That, of course, changed when AMD introduced Zen 1. This is when Intel's entire naming scheme lost all prestige. An i5 in gaming and an i7 in production. And you know what's funny is this is the same thing I said about the 3950X. You know, nothing's really changed in terms of competitiveness from now since 2017. Intel's just continued to look more desperate. But let's talk about what Gamers Nexus means here. Because when they say an i5 in gaming, an i7 in production, remember, there were no i9s at the time. They're talking about an i7, 8, or 10 core in production. And that's really something I have to emphasize to make my point of this video. Before they introduced i9, Intel had already set the standard. Up to 10 cores means i7 and yes we're egregiously still selling you all the way down to six and four cores as an i7 but it's because we can before zen came out any i7 that you get is leagues above what our competition can make but that's just changed and so intel knew they had to bring more threads they said that they're going to be bringing out very expensive core i9s and if you think about it, if you really wanted to keep your provenance, you know, i7 versus r7, what you would do is keep everything you call an i7 now up to 10 cores, maybe an i7, but just bump up the i3s and the i5s. But that's not what they did. They launched another 10 core, and now all of a sudden it's an i9. Even though it uses up to 30 or 40% more energy than the previous 10-core Broadwell EI7 10-core. So in a lot of ways, it's just terribly inefficient. And this was an introduction that instantly killed all of Intel's marketing because they introduced an i9 10-core when it was previously 10 cores could be an i7 right when Threadripper came out. And so the first i9 to launch already looked stupid. This was one of the biggest marketing mistakes in Intel's history that I've ever seen, and it honestly bugs me. 
It bugs me not just because it's an obvious marketing ploy. I mean, pretty much everyone made fun of i9 the second it was introduced. Like, oh, now Intel's getting desperate and trying to make up with it by introducing a new name. Yeah, I, I know. We all know that. But I haven't seen enough people call out how egregious the rollout was. That they had a 10-core i7 that all of a sudden is now an i9. That doesn't really make any sense. Except that they did that to try to sneakily introduce higher core counts without lowering prices to well the price they should be at right think about it if you're selling quad core i5s for three years too long with no hyper threading and then i7s again just just quad core i7s and dual core i3s for this long amd doubles core count you need to do something if they would have just bumped up core counts right away across the board Everyone would have felt shafted. So what Intel did instead is just said, oh, uh, no, i5s are still over here in quad cores, but uh, now an i9's a 10 core. So don't feel bad that you bought that stupid quad core that's starting to stutter in Battlefield games. Well, for the past three years, actually. No, no, no. You weren't ripped off. There's now higher core counts, too. AMD is not beating us, but these are i9s, and these would have been sold at a much higher price if they were introduced sooner. Except they wouldn't have been. Look at this picture here. This is a comparison of previously what a quad-core die looked like from Intel and then what a Haswell one did. Intel was making enormous egregious profits die shrinking their quad cores and selling them for the same or even higher prices as time went on and so what i'm saying is this was going to catch up with intel eventually and they were going to get docked by gamers for how long they had been selling these high core count processors when zen one came out it was inevitable but they could have swallowed their pride early and avoided the ridiculous situation they're in now. Not where half of their lineup is i7s, but half of their lineups are i9s. And if half of your lineup is called i9, i9 isn't special. Let me show you what I mean. So let's start at the apex of the skull crushing of AMD, which is really Skylake Broadwelly. If we look here, i7's already taking up kind of too much room. But the reason Intel got away with this is anything at the four core, eight thread level or higher basically destroyed anything AMD could make at the time. It was just game over, man. I don't know what to tell you. So those were all i7s and they weren't bringing anything above 10 cores to consumers that was the xeon lineup mostly there just so you can you know keep in mind what was up there the whole time then as we move into kb lake kind of one of the most tone deaf launches in history we see that i7 all of a sudden started to become four six and eight and then they introduced the Skylake X 10 core i9 so you can see i9 already encroaching on i7 and Actually, in 2017, for the most part, i7 was just four cores, eight threads. They did rush in what was basically a paper launch of a six core, 12 thread at the end of the year. I know that if you look up reviews, October 2017, they had the i7 8700K. But I can assure you, anyone who lived through that, you were not finding almost any of those in stock ever. They barely even started making them yet. That was a rushed, pulled up launch. Intel actually intended to not launch the i7 8700K or whatever they would have ended up calling it had AMD not launched them way later. So they just shifted all that up, but it was design completed years before it came out. And so then we move on and all of a sudden i7 continues to shrink and i9 gets bigger. And so we get into this situation where the mid range, the middle of Intel's lineup starts at i9. And if the middle starts at i9, this is a complete joke. Now let's talk about what I think they should have done. What Intel should have done, of course, Skylake, they can get away with whatever they want. We move to KB Lake. Let's also just assume that they were going to continue to be tone deaf, but they should have been preparing the second they got concrete numbers on what Zen 1 was going to be when it came out. They should have got ahead of all of this and launched, you know, if they couldn't have made a, an 8-core, 16-thread, mainstream product at that time then it is my opinion they should have just waited for it to come out in 2018 which is when the i9 9900k came out guys they should have pushed that up delayed those launches so that eight cores was i7 
AMD doubled core count. Intel needed to double core count. Eight cores should have been i7. And then again, if you think about it logically, before an i5 was just an i7 without hyperthreading. That's what they should have done with the i5. And the i3 had half as many cores as an i5, but it had hyperthreading. That's what the i3s should have become. Pentium should have been quad cores, and Celerons should have been two, four. And i9s should have been reserved for their HEDT lineup because that's what it's supposed to mean. That was the initial meaning of i9 with Gulf Town. It was supposed to mean the highest end, prominence, more threads than you could ever need. But that's not what i9 means anymore. Unfortunately, what i9 means right now is just most of Intel's lineup, and we hope you think i9 makes it cool. And i9 would have been cool, Intel, if you would have released it at a time that didn't feel like a moment of weakness and for thread counts that made sense, but you didn't. And the reason I made this video, you know, it's kind of a really specific random subject, isn't it, is just because it bothers me. I remember when I was in college and it felt cool to own an i7, right? It was like, wow, you have more threads than you know what to do with. Um, you're never bogged down, and that did used to be the case. I was never bogged down by anything, but now Chrome uses a ton of threads. Um, it, I'm multitasking way more with multiple monitors than I ever... Well, than you even really used to be able to with one graphics card just 10 years ago. And it's just not enough, and yet they're calling half of their lineup something higher than an i7. It's kind of disgusting. i7s used to feel premium. Or, or really, i5s felt premium, i7s felt like overkill, and i3s felt good enough. But let's think about what Intel's managed to do here. i3s don't, certainly, do not feel good enough right now. i3s feel like the bare minimum to use a PC. i5s don't feel premium. You know, those quad cores at 5 gigahertz after overclocking that you used to be able to get in 2012 used to just destroy everything for most people with just four highly clocked cores. But now i5s are the bare minimum. i5s feel like i3s, and i7s feel like i5s, kind of premium. But they used to be overkill. And even i9s don't feel like overkill anymore. I don't know. There is one more thing I want to talk about, though, and I wonder if you can guess what it is. So all of that stuff I just showed you, right, the lead up to the i9 over i7, all of their increases in core counts, we know that they're going to move up to 10 cores, 20 threads in 2020, um, and then they're going to start bringing 6 cores, 12 threads, supposedly, to i5s. And that's long overdue. But, right, that that's long overdue. Intel had ring bus 10 cores on Broadwell E, in 2016, why couldn't they have brought 10 cores out in 2018, two years sooner, right? Comet Lake's on 14 nanometer, and the rumor is that they're going to have 80 to 125 watt TDPs, which who knows how much energy that'll actually end up using. Uh, although I do suspect Comet Lake will be a bit more efficient than people think it will. It, it, I, at least that's what I've seen in laptops I've tested with Comet Lake right now. They do use a lot less energy than you'd think. 14 nanometer is getting better. But wouldn't it have been better for Intel to bring out a 10 core in 2018, even if it used 150 watts, right? It's even at stock. Wouldn't that have been the better choice? They could have. They had done this before. They could have delayed some of their stuff, said, okay, 2017 we lose, AMD gets to win this year. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to accelerate everything else. And at the end of 2018, we're going to bring out 10 core i7s to mainstream, uh, you know, like 8 core, maybe 8 thread i5s, and all of this other stuff. They could have had a full lineup that they're going to have next year, last year. They could have. There's no reason they couldn't have. They could have done this. And if you think about it, Zen came out in 2019. Zen 2 came out in 2019. So Intel could have been in a situation where they said, yep, they won last year, but boom, guess what? Now they got the 8-core 2700X. We got the 10-core i7. I don't know what would they have called it in this alternative reality. i7, I guess i7-9900K is what I'm saying. They should have called it or something. They could have done that. And when I reached out to contacts both in the motherboard space who have, you know, been in this, mar you know, worked in this field the entire time, and to people who have worked at Intel, no one had a good answer. 
And why did they use different chipsets? Why was this such a weirdly rushed and yet too slowly rolled out launch from, you know, four to six to eight cores, now to 10 cores? Why didn't they just do it all at once or at least some of it sooner? And the answer I got unanimously was that Intel thought two things seriously. They didn't seriously think AMD was going to be able to go above eight cores for five years. They thought, yep, they won with the 1800X, but AMD's just going to sit still. That's what I was told. And also, apparently they seriously thought they'd be on 10 nanometer on desktop by now. They did. Intel seriously thought they would be on 10 nanometer in 2019, at least on desktop. And so what's the point in bringing out eight cores on 14 nanometer right away? And then over time, it became clear that wasn't going to happen. And that's what you got to understand. Just because I report that multiple people in Intel, engineers designing these architectures, say 10 nanometers coming this time, it's there's a lot of competition between different divisions at Intel. The people who work at the foundries might just tell their bosses, yep, 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 all going well, sir, all going well, when really it's not going well. And the engineers report to you that things are going well and we're going to be on 10 nanometer, and then they're not. And that really worries me because if they thought we would be on 10 nanometer in 2019 or 2018 or 2017, why should I believe them when they say we're going to be on it in 2020? It's very worrisome for me that... It makes you call into question any information that comes out of Intel because they don't even themselves seem to know what's working and what's not. And I will say this. I do have rumblings that 10 nanometer is coming in 2020 to desktop potentially, that it might be. That Comet, there might be a mixed Comet Rocket Lake launch, which is what they're doing right now, isn't it? They have a mixed Comet Lake launch, Comet Lake Ice Lake launch on laptops. That's the rumor, is that they'll roll out 14 nanometer 10 cores first, but they will have specific, possibly Willow Cove 10 nanometer products mixed in with that lineup as flagships. You know, like a flagship 10 nanometer i5, flagship 10 nanometer i7 and i9. Most of it will be 14. That's the rumor. But I don't know if I can trust that anymore. So do with that what you will. I'm not doing a video on that on its own until... I can confirm some more information about that, but look out for 10 nanometer desktop leaks at the end of this year. I will say that too. Kind of a bombshell I'm just dropping at the end of this video, but I just don't feel confident doing a whole video on it yet. But I will if the leaks come out. And remember this if we learn this in December. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please consider supporting me on Patreon, where you will get ad-free Broken Silicon episodes early, die shrink episodes that are exclusive to the Patreon premium RSS feed, and many more features. And the content's going to keep coming for the rest of the year. The only thing I'll say is if you get one or two videos a week instead of three or four, let me try to catch up on sleep in December. But rest assured, the fact that so many of you are supporting me means that I just... I do feel the need to work myself a little bit to the bone here to make it worthy of you. And that's what this year has been about. 2019 has really been about proving this channel. And 2020 hopefully will be about a cementing it. But if you're on the fence about supporting us for Broken Silicon and all the other stuff, please consider just going the full nine yards. I'm starting to turn down a lot of ad offers because I think ads are annoying. And I want this to be fan-supported. Fan-supported keeps this honest. And if you can't support me, if you're hitchhiking on the Patreons, please share the video. All right. Thank you.